Hello, this is a video on Königsberg, the bridge problem, Prussia, David Hilbert, and present day Kaliningrad, Russia. This is going to be a combination of history, geography, and mathematics. First thing let's do is let's take a look at Prussia. Prussia was a major part of Germany during the German Empire. This map was for 1871 to 1918, which would be the end of World War I. And this was broken up because Germany lost World War I. This entire green region here was Prussia. I'd like us to pay special attention to this region number two, which is East Prussia. Uh, region number 13 is West Prussia, and this remained as Prussia uh, after the breakup. Here's Berlin, the, probably the most famous city of, of Germany. And also I want to emphasize that uh, the Prussian influence is very strong in Berlin and Berlin is very different than, for example, down here in Bavaria. In Bavaria, we have Munich, Germany, and Munich is, is quite different from, from Berlin. So this is a map from 1939. This would have been before World War II. And now this East Prussia region over here, and this is where Königsberg is, is an enclave. Um, and in order to get from this major part of Germany over to East Prussia, you either had to go in the Baltic Sea or cut across Poland. Now let's see what happened after World War II, which is another war that Germany lost. This is a very interesting map. Germany, first of all, the um, East Prussia over here, part of it, kind of the northern half of it, became Russia part of the USSR, the Soviet Union, and this part here became Poland. That's this part right here. Also, this big section that was Germany, this, this section right here, is, is given to Poland in the post-World War II negotiations. Then the Germany that we know present day was divided into four zones, kind of the four major powers um, that were fighting against Germany in World War II. The northern region was the British zone. This southwest region was the French zone. The U.S. zone, where Munich is, and this is what the U.S. got, and then there was the Soviet zone, and of course, in the middle, we had the Berlin and the whole story of the Berlin Wall is, is a, it could be a video in and of itself. So this is the map then right after the end of World War II. The British zone, the French zone, and the U.S. zone became West Germany. The Soviet zone, which was all walled in, was East Germany. In 1991, uh, 1989, the Berlin Wall came down. 1991, Germany was reunited, and this is present-day Germany. Notice this little section over here. After World War II, Königsberg was renamed to Kaliningrad, Russia, and this little section is Russia, and this is a present-day map. Now what I'd like to do is uh, back up to right after World War II. We have this 1948 map in the USSR. The Soviet Union is very large here. And I'd like to look briefly at the breakup of the USSR. 
notice that it runs right up to Poland and Romania. So here are these countries that existed after the breakup of the USSR. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, and Ukraine. All of these were in the USSR. Notice this yellow region right here. This is Russia to this day. And here's Kaliningrad, Russia, which was formerly Königsberg, Prussia. Here's another nice map of the breakup of the Soviet Union. And here's our little yellow region of Russia over here uh, on the Baltic Sea. And there's another whole other group of countries down here, Kazakhstan and so on, that were formerly in the Soviet Union, this red line being the border of the Soviet Union. Now, I'd like to emphasize St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, which has been uh, a Russian city um, all through the years, and uh, a very important city from a Russian standpoint and a very important city from an uh, academic standpoint because there was a great, and there still is a great university there. Here's Moscow. And I want to talk about this kind of road from St. Petersburg to Kaliningrad or Königsberg. It's about a 12-hour car ride, it looks like. And here's this little enclave of Russia, uh, modern-day Russia. And this is Russia up here, right up next to Finland. And in order to get from St. Petersburg to Kaliningrad, you had to go through, you have to go through Estonia um, and, and Lithuania. Now I'd like to uh, take a look at the, the map here so that we can understand the big picture. So here we have Kaliningrad, this very nice harbor here uh, on the Baltic Sea. This is this Russian enclave. Here's Lithuania. Here's Poland. Here's Belarus. And we can see uh, St. Petersburg is going to be up in this area. So you could get from St. Petersburg down here to the old Königsberg, present-day Kaliningrad, by water. And these are also very important ports from a Russian standpoint because they lead to the Baltic Sea, which leads ultimately to the North Sea, which leads out to the Atlantic Ocean. Here is the North Sea, and this small little strip is interesting, this narrow strip of the North Sea. This is where we crossed uh, at D-Day during World War II, and it's also where people can uh, try to swim across to this day. Also, it's interesting here in northern Germany that if you go out this side, you get to the North Sea, the Nordsee, and if you go out this side, you get to the Baltic Sea. In German, it's the Ostsee. So now I'd like to go back to the PowerPoint. Now I'd like to return to Königsberg, Prussia, and talk about a couple of influential figures. Immanuel Kant was an amazing philosopher that lived in the 1700s. Very important figure um, in philosophy, very important figure in the Enlightenment, and wrote the Critique of Pure Reason. Uh, a contemporary of Kant was a Swiss, Swiss mathematician, Leonard Euler, who was very influential in mathematics. There's a picture of Euler. Developed a lot of the modern day notation that we use uh, for functions and uh, mathematical symbolism. He traveled around quite a bit. He did study at St. Petersburg 
And uh, when the wars were bad in Russia, he would leave and he would study in Berlin. Not sure if he actually went to Königsberg. Uh, Königsberg kind of is on the way between uh, St. Petersburg and Berlin. But he did solve the, the Königsberg bridge problem, which I'll be talking about in a couple of slides. I want to take a quick uh, look at David Hilbert. David Hilbert uh, lived in the 1800s and early 1900s. He was born in Königsberg, a very influential mathematician of the 19th and 20th centuries. He studied many areas of mathematics, and one of the things that's notable about Hilbert is he made a list of 23 problems which he published in the year 1900, the turn of the century. And this set the course for much of mathematical research in the 20th century. Some of these problems have been solved, but some of them have not been solved. Another great fact for David Hilbert was he died in Göttingen, Germany, which is mainly known for the wonderful university there and the statue of Frederick Gauss and Weber. Now I'd finally like to talk about the Königsberg bridge problem. The Königsberg bridge problem has to do with a river that, throws, that flows through the city. And there are a couple of islands in the river and seven bridges connect the islands to the other shores. In the 1700s, this was part of East Prussia and Königsberg. And need to have an O umlaut on the O there, but that's okay. This isn't my web page. It was common on Sundays for people to take walks over the bridges. And it led to a question which Leonard Euler described this way. The problem which I understand is quite well known is stated as follows. In the town of Königsberg in Prussia, there is an island called Kainhof with two bridges of the river Pragel flowing around it. There are seven bridges, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, crossing the two branches. The question is whether a person can plan a walk in such a way that he will cross each of these bridges once, but not more than once. I was told that while some denied the possibility of doing this and others were in doubt, no one maintained that it was actually possible. On the basis of the above, I have formulated the following general problem. So here is a picture of the, the seven bridges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bridges. And people wanted to take a walk on a Sunday and go over each bridge exactly once. So what Euler did was he took this map and he made it a little bit abstract by making it into this map. And then he made this graph right here. Each of these nodes, which are called vertices, represent land masses. And each of these edges represent bridges. So if you study this, this particular node right here represents this island, which is this island. And notice that there are one, two, three, four, five bridges leading to that island. The question is, could you start here, for example, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and make it around? That's the question. I'm not sure if I counted those bridges correctly. But Euler did find out that it is not possible and developed the area of mathematics, which is now called graph theory. I encourage you to learn more about graph theory. My name is Jim Olson. Have a great day.